You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake. <laughs> Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Course Lakes Path. So, <clears throat> oh god, sinuses again. Come on, sinuses, knock this off. So guys, we just had a power outage, and we're about to see more of Lakes content. So guys, sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of entertaining, and let's jump right in. Hmm, maybe we can snuggle up with a certain lion and a certain tiger, eh? <clears throat> All right, let's do this. All right, that's cool. Oh, I love power outages. Huh? What? Why? Uh, who likes power outages? Just look around. Look how atmospheric it is here now. We could have just turned off the light, you know. It's not the same. Now, even if we wanted to, we can't turn it back on. The difference seems to be subtle, but I think I understand what he means. <clears throat> yeah, it's, an, it's a difference of atmospherics and such. Ambiance. This, this is like a communal experience. Something exciting, an extraordinary event. When was the last time you didn't have any power? I don't even remember. You're right. It has its charm. But it's also kind of spooky, in a good way. Ooh, maybe there's something supernatural at play here. You know, like, uh, power doesn't just go out without any reason. Huh? How would that work? I don't know, but that's what supernatural means. It's inexplicable. Ooh, maybe there's a serial killer on the loose, and he cut out the power so it would be easier to murder us. How would cutting the power help them? It only alerted us. Hey, stop ruining my fun. Oh, I know what we should do. How about we tell some scary stories? Uh, shouldn't we first go and see what's going on? We know what's going on. We lost power. So, if nobody nobody knows any, I remember one. It's from this area, too. What do you say? Sounds good. Go ahead. I'm curious about the story. Spooky stories time! Lake says in a decidedly unspooky fashion. Lake straightens himself on the chair and looks at us expectantly. We all sit down on the chairs and couch facing him, some excitedly, some hesitantly. The light of the fireplace illuminates him from the side, giving his features a sharp look. So, this is a story I've heard from a guy at uni. He's a friend with a group that often goes for fjord trips, and this happened to him three years ago. When looking online for places to stay around these parts for an early winter trip, they found a neat-looking cabin that was dirt cheap. They looked, they booked it right away, happy they, they, they found a deal so good. So they booked the cabin for the four of them, chatted a bit over email with the owner, who seemed pretty nice, and got ready for the trip. They arrived at the town by car in the afternoon and met with the owner of the cabin, an older Bernese mountain dog gentleman. I would like to see this, this his story actually made into a VN. I think this would be a cool VN, a horror VN. He gave them the directions to the cabin and the key, and wished them a thrilling stay. The cabin was further from the town than they thought, and they drove through frozen plains and forests for almost half an hour. But when they arrived and saw a picturesque meadow where the cabin was, they thought that it was, they thought that it was worth coming. The cabin itself looked nice, too. It was a simple wooden structure, but it had a certain charm to it. It was only October, but the weather was really cold that year, and everything, everything was covered by a thick layer of snow, just like that, just like now. They entered the cabin and found it neat and cozy perfect for a short stay. It was equipped with a kitchenette, three beds, a couch, a table, and a few chairs. So, pretty much everything they needed. There was also a stack of plain can of wax candles and matches on the table, and a few old paintings were hanging on the walls. One of them depicting a forest in the winter unsettled them for some reason. The more they looked at it, the more they felt like something in the woods stared back at them. They ended up taking the painting down and hiding it behind the couch for the time being, and continued unpacking. Afterwards, they went... Afterwards, they... Afterwards, they went for a walk around the area, just to see if there's anything interesting there. But as they walked through the woods, they felt the same unsettling presence that stared at them from the painting. Spooked, they retreated to the cabin. As soon as they were, as soon as they were back in, though, the door locked securely behind them. They started to laugh at themselves. I'll label these pages now. Lake. Which one are you? I don't know which one you are. I think you're Miko. Okay, I don't know. I shall know in time. Okay. How silly was that? They spooked themselves over some old painting. It was already getting late and dark, so they decided to stay in for the day. They wouldn't be bored for sure. They were partying a bunch, and they brought they brought speakers and a lot of booze with them. So they spent the whole rest of the day and half of the night partying, drinking, singing, and having a great time. When they woke up the next day, it was it was already afternoon. The day was cloudy, and it must have been snowing all night. 
As they looked outside, they saw that everything, including their car, was covered in pillowy white mounds. As the others were busy preparing food, one of them went out to clear the snow from the car. But as she opened the door, she, she saw a terrifying sight. The whole front door and frame had deep, regular scratches, as if made with blades or monstrous claws. As she looked down, she saw paw prints that were already covered by fresh snow. They seemed unnaturally huge. She walked around the cabin and saw similar markings on one window frame and more paw steps leading into the woods. Terrified, she hurried back inside and closed the door behind her, thinking the skies above that they all locked that they locked all the windows the previous night. The rest got pretty spooked seeing her tr all trembling and breathless. They led her to the couch and let her rest for a short while before she recounted what she had been at, what she had seen outside. The others thought that she that she was trying to trick them, but when they opened the door, they weren't laughing anymore. Terrified, they gathered around the table and tried to make sense of it. Was it a burglar trying to break in and steal their stuff, or some psycho wanting to murder them? And why did they leave so many marks? They all agreed that the best course of action was to call the owner of the cabin. They pulled straws, and the same girl that went outside in the morning was tasked with calling. She did, but of course, there was no reception. Spooked, they agreed to grab the more valuable of their belongings and ride back to town. Packing only took them a little while, a short while, but left all the best behind and got into the car. Riding back the road they came, they were sure they were safe, until they got stuck in the snow just after five minutes of riding from the cabin. One of them wanted to continue forward on pause, but finally they all agreed it's too late and cold for that, for that and the town was too far away. If they were driving there for half an hour, walking would take much, much longer. Instead, they decided to go back to the cabin and try calling the police, or at least hope that the cabin owner would pay them a visit. They walked back in silence, too terrified for any small talk. Along the way, they regularly checked the reception, and there was still none. By the time they got back, it was already dark. The only, only the full moon illuminated the snow-covered meadow. The cabin was just as they left it. The cuts were still there on the door and the frames. It looked as though no one or nothing tried to get inside while they were out. They entered the cabin and once again locked the door securely and checked all the windows. They didn't have any weapons, but they thought that as long as they were awake, no one would try to break in again. They decided to stay until the morning. Once it got brighter and a bit warmer outside, they and then tried to walk back to town. In the meantime, to stay awake and alert, they decided to play party games. They started with Spin the Bottle and played it for a while, but late at night, the last candle burnt out. Darkness flooded the room. They all fell silent, and that's when they heard heavy steps outside. Lake takes a dramatic pause, and I'm so engrossed in the story, I swear I can hear paw steps myself. I glance at the corridor and see nothing but a press of darkness. Lake takes a phone out of his pocket and turns on the torch. The only source of light left was their phones, but they were too terrified to move. Finally, one of them grabbed his phone and pointed it at the window. Lake lifts his phone dramatically and shines the light from her, shines the light around the room. And behind the window, they saw... Behind the window where Lake is looking, there's a towering figure standing and looking inside. A loud thud shakes the whole room. Looks like Lake fell back from the chair he was in. Fucking hell, Lake, are you okay? I run up to Lake, who's sitting on the floor behind the chair, looking at me with a terrified gaze. Music got spooky. <laughs> Carvin, what the hell? I, I was just improvising this. Lake springs upright, terror clearing his wandering eyes. Hey, calm down. That was definitely not a monster. Since when do monsters wear clothes? I don't know, but I don't like this, Carvin. The rest stood up to see what's up with Lake's sudden bout of panic. Have you seen it too? What? Everyone, to my room now. Oh, I guess. Okay, I guess we're all going to Lake's room. Lake storms out the room, pulling me after him. Other, others pause steps follow, accompanied by agitated whispers, until we all make it upstairs to Lake's room. It all happens so fast I don't have time to question it, trying to keep up with Lake's pace, especially with Lake's paw holding mine firmly. In the darkness, I hear several others' door doors opening, other students peeking out into the darkness. But Lake opens the door to his room hurriedly to let us all in. Come on! What are you waiting for? A, potted pa a padded paw presses against my back and decided decisively pushes me inside. I walk further into the room and sit down on the bed to make space for the rest. All in? What kind of situation did we just find ourselves in? Looks like it. There was no one left in the corridor. Oh, wow. We really all just fucking went to Lake's room, didn't we? <laughs> Though, why exactly are we here? We're hiding, of course. Hiding? There was someone behind the window! Miko doesn't seem convinced. Unlikely the... Likely the guest house's technician. We lost power. Maybe someone needs to come and fix it. He was standing behind the window, looking at us with, t with no tools in his paws. I think I'm with Jorgen on this one. Sorry. Lake walks up to the window, discreetly peeking out. I can't see anyone outside now. What if they cut off the lights so they can murder us? What? How would that even help? 
If anything, they're, they alarmed us all, and they didn't, cut, they didn't cut off the signal, right? I check my phone and still have reception, although very weak. I sit down on the bed, considering our situation. I don't know how to feel about it myself. Am I? Spooked. Yep. This is, uh, kind of terrifying. If there was a blizzard, I'd understand the blackout, but the weather has been calm for most of the day. And the guy outside, he didn't look like a technician. He didn't have any tools with him and not even a torch. Can we light the room up a bit? I can barely see anything. Well, well, we don't have power. That's the whole problem. Yeah, but like, a torch maybe? We do, we do have torches in our phones, right? Are you crazy? They will see that we're in here. Guys? Who exactly? We don't know and that's the issue. Guys. What? I think I can hear something outside. Paw steps. Slow and deliberate. Someone walking up the stairs. Oh no, it's Mr. X! Fucking run! The wooden steps creak ominously one by one, like someone groaning in discomfort. Everyone inside the room freezes, listening. Steps stop right outside our door. The silence stretches out, each moment unbearable. Leg's paw finds an arm and he holds onto me, clutching out my sweater. We stare at the door intensively, intensely, as if we could see who's on the other side if we focus enough. Finally, the steps pick up again, and we collectively exhale with relief. That was close! It collapses onto the bed and leans against me, releasing my arm from his death grip. I pet the lion's head gently, trying to calm him down and thinking of what we could do now. For most, it's terribly dark in here. I can barely see the rest. Mika was sitting on the other bed, looking rather disinterested. Jorgen is talking with Travis, and... Wait, where's Torolf? <laughs> where's Torolf? I didn't see him come upstairs with us. What happened to him? Lake, please, don't crush my arm. We need to go find him. What? Why? I'm sure he's fine. At least send him a message first and see if he responds. I will, but I still feel bad about leaving him. I'm going out. Who's going with me? Well, I... Okay, we all are, I think. Maybe we'll find out what's happening while we're at it. A nod in agreement, only then remembering that Jorgen likely cannot even see me. Yeah, if anything, we, should, we shouldn't split up. You know how it always ends up in horror films. Are we in one? If we are, then it's certainly a low-budget one. I only hope it's not a slasher. What, you'd rather it be a monster or an alien invasion movie? <laughs> Lake opens the door carefully and listens. I, I think it's all clear. Anyone going? I don't want to go first. The lion hasn't stopped holding on to me since we decided to leave the room. Now, after the spin the bottle and the questions I got from Lake, our closeness takes on an additional layer of meaning, and I can't help but blush under my fur, feeling the lion's heat. I can go first, unless someone else wants that honor. Silence is enough of a reply. Can I at least turn on the torch now? I guess we're more vulnerable if we can't see anything. I walk out into the corridor, Lake finally letting go of my arm, and take out my phone. As I slide my paw into my pocket, something collides with me, pushing me backwards into Lake. What the- Shoot! Sorry! Oh, Klaus. Carvin, hello. The light comes back come back as suddenly as it went away, revealing a black cat standing in the corridor in front of us. D do I know you? How do you know my name? I hope the black cat didn't bother you too much. That was unplanned. The cat ignored my question completely. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go replace this. He shakes his paw when she's holding a blue box with some knobs and lights. I don't like something I'd expect to see in Miko's room. Some kind of an audio effect? But what would he need that for? Before I can protest, the cat maneuvers past me and walks down the stairs. Or maybe I should say glides. With how quiet he is and smooth his, move, his moves are. Do you guys know him? I do. He sat at our table during lunch yesterday. His name is Klaus, I think. But I don't think I know... I don't know much apart from that. That was... Worrying. Was it? I wanted to say weird. That too. Anyway, we still have Torolf to find. For what? Torolf, where the hell have you been? I stayed in the common room. Shortly after you left, Coach came through the guest house and told everyone he'd found he found a move to the cafeteria, where he was sitting with the staff, but he didn't notice me in the chair. So I stayed there and chilled with a book in the fireplace. You're right, it was quite atmospheric, though it looks like they already fixed it. You just stayed downstairs and chilled? And I was so worried about you, couldn't you answer my message at least? I didn't see any, and I had an e-book reader open. But it's good that the light is back. You can go back and finish the game. I don't think I want to play still. I think I need to. I need to think I need some rest before supper. Well, see you there then. 
and Torov leaves us standing in the corridor. Meanwhile, the rest stand around awkwardly. <laughs> so, I think I'll go back to my room. Some rest after this would be nice indeed. And I'll be going too, but it was nice to hang out. Thank you. Miko glances at me, but from his face I still can't read anything at all. Well, it's been fun. Thank you guys. Travis gives Lake a friendly pat on the back before leaving, and finally it's just the two of us alone again. Suddenly Lake rests his whole weight on me, deflating. Carvin. Yes? That was a lot. Quite. Quite a lot. Yeah. It's been a busy day in general. His weight on me doesn't diminish. Instead, Lake leans on me even more, his snout resting against my shoulder. Do you want some rest? Mm-hmm. A muffled sound and a nod. And a nod and a, and a nod, wet nose rubbing against the fabric of my t-shirt. Let's go back to your room, then. I won't have to carry you, I hope. Could I... Could I even? Likely not. My best bet is that Lake weighs the same as me, being a tad taller, but also slimmer. Well... Lake straightens up, rubbing the back of his head. I thought about going to the sauna. I haven't been there today yet. A sauna? The burning coals, the smell of wood, the burning heat penetrating the fur and licking at the skin underneath. Lake, that's a fantastic idea. Is it? Yeah, I haven't been to the sauna today either. After all, after all this, we definitely deserve a session. Now that the tension subsided, my heart is slowly going back to normal, but a great fatigue slowly starts weighing, starts weighing on me. Everything that happened today, the organs problems, the lectures, now the blackout and Lake panicking. Great! Do you need anything from your room, or can we go there now? I'll take the shampoo with me. It's so late that I might as well shower already. Good idea. I think I'll do the same. So, see you there in three minutes? Sounds good. Sauna. Really a great idea. Ah, play that guitar, Rune. Alright, so guys, I'm gonna go ahead and save it right here. Since we're getting into the, uh, I think, final stretches of Lake's content, I'm gonna save that for another video. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this silly little video. I do enjoy bringing you guys content. I don't plan on stopping for a long, long time. I really enjoy this. And a lot of you enjoy my videos, too. A lot of you tell me that, you know, watching my videos helps you relax, helps you deal with depression, and... That's really why I got into this in the first place. I wanted to entertain people. I wanted to... Uh, distract people. Take people's minds off... Take their minds off of, you know, their problems and such. You know, it's just... <laughs> it's crazy to think how, how much this channel has grown since, since, <laughs> since I started. It's really absolutely nuts, guys. I'm like, I'm getting almost 4,000 views. Sometimes I'm getting over 4,000 views a day. Like, 71 hours, 7,100 hours watched a month. Like, I never thought the channel would blow up like this, but I never thought I'd be making four to five videos a day either, but I've slotted that into my schedule. I found a way to make it work. You know, I've balanced a part-time job with it. Pretty well, I, I must admit, with me being able to still pump out videos on the daily when I'm working. And I think what's even better is that, for me, it's not overwhelming. I, I found a good balance. Um, that being said, there is a big change coming up in my life soon. And I'm going to share that with you guys in a future video. It's going to be like a little short-form video I released to let you guys know what's going on. Um... Things on the channel are going to stay the same, but things in my personal life are going to be be getting quite different. Um, yeah, things in my personal life are about <coughs> about to take a bit of a turn. Hopefully for the best. I think for the best, but it's something that's cost it's costing me quite a bit of money to do. Um, I, I think it's for the better because it's going to bring me closer to my boyfriend and our dream of living together. So, yeah. But anyway, guys, thank you for listening to me ramble on. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks, or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!